small-scale farmers like these that are driving Zimbabwe's economy. Overall growth this year will surpass that of 2013, supported by a rebounding agricultural sector. But that's where the good news ends. According to the World Bank, economic growth will fall shy of the 6% forecast by the finance minister. It blames sluggish global mineral prices, the high cost of production and a strong U.S. dollar. Zimbabwe is also battling a perception challenge. Local businesses don't believe their assets are secure. The 2014 World Bank's Doing Business Index ranks Zimbabwe 170 out of 189 countries. One of the parameters which is more relevant is the protection of assets is perceived as weak. And that's, by the way, maybe links up to the question why are you trying to keep in assets under the pillow? It's a frustration for the finance minister, but he believes that the credit crunch is also in part due to economic sabotage by banks. But, uh, they are imposing sanctions on their own country. Because some of these banks, before these problems, had lines of credit, borrowing lines of credit to own lend to their customers, 800 million annually. Some of them are just 40 million. So the question again arises, why are they not doing those things they were doing before? Is it because they don't like the government? The former economy is being boycotted by its own people. According to the World Bank, there are almost 3.5 million small to medium enterprises operating in the country, but around 85% of them are unregistered, meaning that they don't pay any taxes. Shingai Nyoka, SABC News, Harare, Zimbabwe.